when Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD and destroyed the towns of Pompeii and Herculaneum, it destroyed all living things, but it did leave behind a wonderful lot of artifacts, including mosaics and, and frescoes and uh, various items of tableware and jewelry. I spoke to the curator of the exhibition, Paul Roberts, about the treasures on show. What we want to do is to look at the house, what goes on within the home. And very importantly, it's the two cities. It's Pompeii and Herculaneum, because they both have very important stories to tell. But they weren't extraordinary other than in their death. They were covered by the volcano, so their life was stopped at that moment. They are different cities, but it's only when we bring them together that we can get a real picture of, of the Romans in their city and also at home. There were very, very many slaves in the Roman Empire. There was, for example, the couple um, have a slave called Marcus, and their family name is Cornelius. Well, their slave is only called Marcus in the house. And when they free him, he becomes Marcus Cornelius. He takes their name, he carries on with the, the, the shop or the business that he's running, and it's of benefit to both the master and the slave because the master's clan, his familia, is increased, the slave gets his freedom, and his children will be full citizens, but they'll always have that bond with the Corneli family. And this is very important in Roman society. It creates a web of contacts, and that's how your family's kudos will grow. So there's a couple having sex on a beautifully covered bed with mattresses and cushions, and there's a slave standing behind the bed, and slaves would be present even at these most intimate of moments. It was simply a part of normal life within the house. For the Romans to see a phallus with bells hanging off it or a phallus affixed to a statue, for them it would be an indication of good luck. It was talismanic rather than sexual. Um, and, and so we see these symbols everywhere in art, on the street corners, marking businesses, even above the oven of a baker, you have a phallus. And all it's doing is keeping away the evil spirits and bringing good fortune. Kitchens were very often out of the way, slightly dark and dingy places, and they were often quite smelly because of smoke and also because, believe it or not, the toilet was often situated in the kitchen. It was a useful way of combining all your disposals of waste into one place. So the kitchen was not the kind of place we might expect today. The objects, they're possessions. We must think of them as, as not museum artifacts, but things that people owned and, and enjoyed. And they tell us stories about the people who owned them and who used them.